So yesterday we looked over the state's directions for this uh, argumentative essay, and uh, the first thing it says in the directions is to closely read each of the four texts provided. So uh, let's get going with that. So today we'll check out text one. Um, it is the longest text in the packet with a, uh, at, at a whopping three pages, but there's pictures. And uh, before we get going with this, a couple quick reminders. Um, although you are welcome to pick either side of the argument of uh, uh, is graffiti vandalism, when we gave this uh, the very first time, uh, a, a lot of students, in particular uh, students who are really into art, uh, grudgingly found that it was uh, an easier essay to write if you go with, yeah, yeah, um, graffiti is vandalism. Now, if you, uh, if, if you want to go with, uh, nah, nah, it's not vandalism, um, it's doable. It's still very doable. You're, it, it's a little, little trickier, but it is doable. So anyway, let's get into text one, which is titled, What is Street Art? Vandalism, Graffiti, or Public Art? Part one. What is street art? There is as yet no simple definition for street art. It is an amorphous, oh hey look, there's a little number one next to that word amorphous. Maybe you don't know that word. Lucky for you, there's a footnote. And there's going to be a number of uh, footnotes in this article. To be honest, there's a couple words in here that I didn't see ever before either. Lucky there's footnotes. Check out the footnotes. It helps with your understanding. Anyway, it is an amorphous beast encompassing art which is found in or inspired by the urban environment. With anti-capitalist and rebellious undertones, it is a democratic form of popular public art, probably best understood by seeing it in situ. It is not limited to the gallery, nor easily collected or possessed by those who may turn art into a trophy. Considered by some a nuisance, for others, street art is a tool for communicating views of dissent, asking difficult questions, and expressing political concerns. Its definitions and uses are changing. Originally a tool to mark territorial boundaries of urban youth, today it is even seen in some cases as a means of urban beautification and regeneration. Whether it is regarded as vandalism or public art, street art has caught the interest of the art world and its lovers of beauty. Is street art vandalism? In an interview with the Queen's Tribune, New York City's Queen's Museum of Art Executive Director Tom Finkelpearl said public art is the best way for people to express themselves in this city. Finkelpearl, who helps organize socially conscious art exhibitions, added, art gets dialogue going. That's very good. However, he doesn't find graffiti to be art and says, I can't condone vandalism. It's really upsetting to me that people would need to write their names over and over again in public space. It's this culture of fame. I really think it's regrettable. They think that's the only way to become famous. Is street art illegal? The legal distinction between permanent graffiti and art is permission. But the topic becomes even more complex regarding impermanent, non-destructive forms of graffiti like yarn bombing, video projection, and street installation. With permission, traditional painted graffiti is technically considered public art. Without permission, painters of public and private, po and painters of public and private property are committing vandalism and are, by definition, criminals. However, it still stands that most street art is unsanctioned, and many artists who have painted without permission, like Banksy, Shepard Fairey, have been glorified as legitimate and socially conscious artists. Broken window theory, vandalism versus street art. Vandalism is inexcusable destruction of property and has been shown to have negative repercussions on its setting. It has also been observed by criminologists to have a snowball effect of generating more negativity within its vicinity. Dr. James Q. Wilson and Dr. George Kelling studied the effects of disorder, in this case a broken window, in an urban setting and found that one instance of neglect increases the likelihood of more broken windows 
and graffiti will appear. Then there is an observable increase in actual violent crime. The researchers concluded that there is a direct link between vandalism, street violence, and the general decline of a society. Their theory, named the broken window theory and first published in 1982, argues that crime is the inevitable result of disorder and that if neglect is present in a place, whether, whether it is disrepair or thoughtless graffiti, people walking by will think no one cares about that place and the unfavorable damage is therefore acceptable. Street art and gentrification. Thoughtful and attractive street art, however, has been suggested to have regenerative effects on the neighborhood. In fact, the popular street artist Banksy, who has catapulted his guerrilla street art pastime into a profitable career as, as an auctionable contemporary artist, has come under criticism for his art contributing to the gentrification of neighborhoods. Appropriate media claims that Banksy sells his lazy polemics to Hollywood movie stars for big bucks. Graffiti artists are the performing spray can monkeys for gentrification. In collusion with property developers, they paint deprived areas bright colors to indicate the latest funky inner city area ripe for regeneration, pushing out low-income families in their wake to be replaced by middle-class metrosexuals with their urban art collections. Uh, a word about gentrification. Uh, it is, uh, it, it, it's an issue that I guess there's two ways to feel about it. Um, in, in one case, um, it's, uh, I suppose some people are like, why are you not in favor of improving neighborhoods? Um, but I, and, and that makes sense to me, all right? But on the other side of the coin um, is, when a neighborhood is, is, is gentrified, you change the neighborhood as well. Uh, here's an example. So when I went to Buff State in the 90s, um, it's on a street called Elmwood, uh, and the whole Elmwood area has, uh, has for decades been a very cool, very artsy uh, section of Buffalo, New York. But there's a lot of people in the area that are upset that it is being gentrified. There, there, there's, a, there, there's a lot of updates to the area that are welcomed by some, but not welcomed by others. Here's an example. Um, this, is, uh, this is a picture of a record store called Home of the Hits. Now, I get it that that's a record store. There's not very many record stores anymore. Um, I get that. I get that. But this was a staple of the area. This was uh, this this is this is some place I went at least a couple times a week. Um, they specialized in in punk and alternative and 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 hard to find stuff. Um, they sold uh, tickets for uh, for for local shows um, and they and they sold uh, uh, they even sold local music. In, in fact, I was in a pretty lousy little punk band in, in the 90s and, uh, and we recorded a few songs and we, we sold a couple copies there. Uh, no, no, I, I do not have any recordings of that stuff anymore. Um, I wish I did. If I did, I'd play you some, but uh, we're both out of luck there. So, uh, eventually, uh, the record store did close and became uh, a tattoo studio, which was cool. Um, so I went there. Uh, actually, that's, that's it's where I got this is an awkward angle. It's where I got this one here. Uh, and I was really psyched to be able to get that work done in the same building that meant so much to me uh, when I was younger. I, mean, that, that, I got that done just a couple years ago. Uh, but now, now, that, that shop and the shops around it, which were cool things like uh, um, vintage clothing stores, the antique shops, uh, just stores that sold weird stuff, uh, they're gone. So they bulldozed all those properties that I really liked, and, uh, and they replaced it with this, condos. And don't get me wrong, it's a, it's, it's a very pretty building. Um, but uh, what they ended up doing is they, they took so much of the coolness out of the neighborhood. I mean, they're really digging at being an artsy neighborhood, but they have since priced out many artists. So this is, this is the problem 
with gentrification. Next up, video projection. And being we're from this area, we kind of know a little bit about this because of Luma. Uh, digitally projecting a computer manipulated image onto a surface via a light and projection system and there's a picture there uh, Street installation street installations are a growing trend within the street art movement Whereas conventional street art and graffiti is done on surfaces or walls street installations use a three use 3d objects and space to interfere with the urban environment. Like graffiti, it is non-permission based and once the object or sculpture is installed, it is left there by the artist. Yarn bombing. Yarn bombing is a type of street art that employs colorful displays of knitted or crocheted cloth rather than paint or chalk. This, the practice is believed to have originated in the US with Texas knitters by, uh, trying to find a creative way to use their leftover and unfinished knitting projects, but has since spread worldwide. While other forms of graffiti may be expressive, decorative, territorial, socio-political commentary, advertising, or vandalism, yarn bombing is almost exclusively about beautification and creativity. And that's it for this first article. Uh, so I did put together uh, another small quiz. I guess we're waiting for you. Ah, oh, you guessed it. Schoology. So uh, I think you know what to do. Um, check out the quiz. Uh, and, and keep kicking around the idea of, uh, of which stance you're going to take. Don't make up your mind yet. Uh, if we did text one today, guess what we're doing tomorrow. Oh, wow. You're a genius. You're right. Text two. See you tomorrow.